In the new version of MarkEdit, um, one of the new pieces of information that's been added is a tool called MarkNext. You'll see it showing up here. This is actually a research tool bench um, that uh, exposes um, a number of kind of research tools around some of the conceptual elements around bib frame and linked data. Right now there are three tools, uh, the bib frame testbed, the JSON object viewer, and linked identifiers. Uh, for this particular um, discussion, I am going to talk about the uh, bib frame testbed. So the bib frame testbed is a tool that takes um, the uh, Library of Congress XQuery data and makes it available so that users can translate data um, from MARC or a variety of other uh, metadata types into a uh, bib frame uh, data serialization. Uh, the XQuery paths are being pulled from uh, my personal server. I, I downloaded the ones that the Library of Congress makes available, made a couple of changes that are small, um, and posted them. Um, however, you can change the XQuery path. You can point them back to the Library of Congress's uh, GitHub repository, or um, if you happen to be using one of the other um, bib frame representations and they happen to use XQuery as the way to process that data, you can actually point to those XQuery files instead. Alright, so how does this work? So what I've done is I've downloaded a file um, from uh, uh, Z39.50. Um, it's this one here. I will go ahead and open the file really quickly. Uh, it's basically a, a simple mark file here. See, it's got uh, 100s, whatnot. Okay, so basic bib file. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the the bib frame tool to translate that mark file into um, a RDF serialization. So we'll go ahead and select the file and select the file we want to process. We will go ahead and save it. Uh, go ahead and put it here and overwrite that file. Uh, you can see in the file type it identifies it as mark. Um, this is important because if it's an XML file, you need to select the type of um, record data you're working with. Uh, base URL, um, conceptually, this would be where, kind of like your ILS, or where the data is coming from. Um, and then, like I said, the XPath, and then the data serialization. You have RDF, RDF raw, and triple JSON, and exhibit JSON. Um, I'm going to process a couple of those here. Um, as we go along. So this is RDF, so we'll go ahead and process the file. Uh, the files get downloaded, um, the XQuery files get downloaded, they get applied um, and processed, and at the end we end up getting uh, the files been processed. We can go ahead and look at it. So if we go back to the desktop, we can find the file here. And this is the bib frame representation using the Library of Congress's XQuery data. You'll see the work, the instance, and then if you keep going down, you'll see annotations. All right, so that's that's all well and good. Um, so let's go ahead and do a, a different representation. So I have a the, one of the EAD3 test files. The um, folks that, the, that are working on EAD3 have provided a couple of example files. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that as an XML file. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a bib frame representation. I have to tell from the file type what it is. I'm going to tell it it's an EAD file. And I'm going to go ahead and continue to leave it as an RDF serialization. And we go ahead and process it. And what MarkEdit's doing is stepping through the process of translating that EAD data into a uh, format that can be processed um, and then uh, taking that data and processing it through the XQuery. You can see the file's been processed. So if I go back here, um, the EAD3 test file uh, is basically a, a made-up test file. This is one that's been hosted um, on the GitHub account. So you can see this is the EAD3 test file. Um, the bib frame representation of that uh, utilizing um, the tool set that's been uh, created lives right here and you can see that there's again the work statement um, the annotations and 
um, uh, topic statements and whatnot. So this is the, uh, the representation. So you can see that the, the data has been translated. So in addition to RDF, there are other serializations. So we can take that initial test file and we can translate it into something else. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to translate it into a JSON file. There are different kinds of JSON um, serializations. There's a, a JSON example, um, which um, the JSON viewer has that I've created has some trouble working with uh, because one of the top level elements gets repeated. Um, and then there's a, what's called exhibit JSON, uh, which is kind of a, I think, a more of a flatter view. Um, I'm going to go ahead and generate it as exhibit JSON, so I'm going to use it a little later. So I'm going to go ahead and process it. Uh, the data gets processed. Um, and then we can go ahead and we can see uh, the JSON file that's been created here. And you can see the the JSON file that gets outputted um, as part of the representation. And so this is the exhibits version. Um, and then there's also, uh, we'll go ahead and process it as a, we can also process it as just flat JSON the non-exhibit font kind. And then we can look at that file and see that it's, uh, it's slightly different than the exhibit representation. Um, so this would be the uh, the no exhibit JSON. So you can see that it's very different from the exhibited version. Um, so you have two different types of JSON serializations here. All right. So that is um, the bib frame test bed. This is, as I said, this has been designed up front um, to provide um, folks the ability to test um, some of the concepts and, and provide a way for catalogers the ability to take